Meet Othniel Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, two mustachioed 19th century paleontologists who didn't like each other. Their conflicting personalities and professional disagreements led to a fierce rivalry. Each man spent their respective career desperately trying to humiliate and outdo the other. One very famous example included Cope's discovery of a giant marine reptile called Elasmosaurus. Marsh was quick to point out that Cope had reconstructed the creature wrong, placing the head at the end of the tail, for which Cope received no shortage of mockery. The rivalry between Cope and Marsh became so toxic that from 1877 to 1892, the two scientists were in a race to find as many new dinosaurs as possible whilst discrediting one another in an effort to become the most renowned scientist. This period was known as the Great Dinosaur Rush, or the Bone Wars, which is also a really good name for a heavy metal band. Cope and Marsh spent years and years and thousands of dollars launching expeditions to dig up fossils throughout the American Midwest. They also used some pretty slimy subversive tactics to undermine one another's efforts, including spying, bribery, theft and sabotage. Between them they discovered loads of new dinosaurs, many of which would go on to become some of the most popular and recognisable prehistoric animals. But there was one discovery in particular which has been the subject of a lot of debate and speculation. One of Cope's excavation parties brought him a collection of broken and poorly preserved bones. They appeared to be pieces of the leg and vertebra from a diplodocid sauropod, a relative of such long-necked herbivores as Apatosaurus, Diplodocus and Brontosaurus. But what made these bones special was that even by dinosaur standards they were enormous. Cope estimated that if this dinosaur had similar proportions to its known relatives, it could have been up to 60 metres long and weighed as much as 120 tonnes, which would make it the biggest dinosaur ever discovered. He named this leviathan Amphicelius fragilimus. As a reference, because I know you people can't get enough of my size comparisons, this is Amphicelius next to a six foot human. Here it is next to a man doing the 60 metre sprint. And here it is next to the cure playing Glastonbury in 1986. The claims of Amphicelius's great size were hotly contested, after all this was only a calculation based on very scant remains, but since the 1800s the methods that scientists use to calculate the size of fossil animals have become much more rigorous and accurate. So why not get the bones out again and measure them and see what kind of result we get? Well, in theory we could, if we knew where they were. At some point during the Bone Wars, the remains of the giant Amphicelius mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Good heavens! It's well documented that Cope and Marsh fought dirty during their conflict, so it's entirely possible that the bones were stolen or purposefully destroyed by one of Marsh's associates in an effort to take this victory away from Cope. The other possibility, which is quite likely given the condition of the bones, was that they just crumbled into dust and were swept away by the museum janitor. Who left this mess? <laughs> by the end of their careers, Cope and Marsh were financially ruined, socially outcast, and professionally shunned by a scientific community that wanted nothing to do with their petty and expensive squabbling. But in the same way that real wars fuel progress for technology and science, the Bone Wars were a huge leap forward for paleontology, with Cope and Marsh's expedition teams refining a lot of the techniques that modern paleontologists use, and by naming and describing a whole menagerie of new creatures. To this day, Amphicelius fragilimus remains something of an unsolved mystery, dare I say, an urban legend in the world of paleontology. Like a Jurassic Bigfoot or Bermuda Triangle or Amelia Earhart, it's mysterious and enigmatic, and should we ever get a proper explanation? it'll probably end up being a lot less impressive than we've come to expect. Hi there, hope you enjoyed this video, I certainly enjoyed making it. Uh, please check out my channel if you want to see some more, and subscribe if you want to keep up with new content. Right now I'm working with the Lapworth Museum of Geology in Birmingham to promote their campaign for Art Fund Museum of the Year. I'll be visiting the Lapworth very soon and putting out a video explaining why I think they should win this competition, as well as drawing a life reconstruction of their mounted Allosaurus skeleton. I'll put a link in the description to their campaign video as well as all their social links and I would appreciate it if you shared it around on their behalf with all the relevant hashtags. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you later.